talk to you about purchasing a Riker. This video is for those that have been researching the Riker online and have the inspiration of at some point walking into the dealership and possibly purchasing a Riker. I get a lot of questions in my DMs regarding how to purchase it, where did I purchase mine, I purchased mine used. I've been in the car sales business for a long time, so I know, you know the process to what it is to obtain a loan and so forth. I'll start with um, MSRP. Some people don't understand what the MSRP is. It's your manufacturer suggested retail price. Well, the manufacturer suggests the dealership should retail that vehicle for, that Riker for. Dealerships are right now selling these things for MSRP. In the market that we in, they are not discounting these uh, these Rikers or Spiders. Now, some dealerships are pricing these things over the MSRP. And to be honest, in my personal opinion, I wouldn't pay above MSRP for any vehicle. I mean, there was a time that you would negotiate down, and I get it. You know, at this time right now, the supply is low and the demand is high, so people are willing to pay MSRP, which I would too if I really wanted one. 12 or 24 months these things are going to stabilize a little bit and you're going to be able to pick it up at a good price the use market right now is crazy on them but you should be able in the next 12 to 24 months these things are going to come down in price and there is going to be more availability on it all right so when you walk into the dealership you know always remember that the salesperson is not your friend the salesperson is there to sell you something they're going to assist you in the purchase of the Riker Hopefully by this time you've already done some research online so you already know what you want and how to build it out. So if you see one in the showroom, you can kind of know what MSRP is going to be and what accessories uh, are going to be built out on the build. Whatever accessories are on the Riker, if there's cer certain things that you don't want on it, you could ask the dealership to remove them and they would take it off the list. All right, so on your retail order, you should really just see like the MSRP, the accessories you've chosen, uh, there's going to be your prep, your freight, your taxes. Sometimes, uh, I think some states do a tire tax. And then there's going to be your registration and your documentation. Documentation is usually uh, a small profit that the dealership adds on. It's for them, you know, taking care of some of the paperwork that comes to put the deal together. That's their logic behind that. If it's written in the retail order and it says it's stamped on there, like let's say it's 250, then everybody pays 250. Prep, obviously, they're gonna put the vehicle together for you, so they're gonna charge you for that. And freight is what they were charged to bring the vehicle into the dealership, which then gets passed on to the consumer. Um, they do that in the auto business too, which is destination. But there was times that you negotiate, you know, some of the price down, and you kind of come ahead on it. It's simple math. Once you get it all in writing, you should you know, pull out your phone, get a calculator, and kind of see where you're at number-wise. It's all pretty much addition. Um, and you should come out to the same number that they have. You know, And if there's a big discrepancy, you should question it. Why is it $2,000 more, what I'm coming up with? And then you can figure out if they're marking the vehicle up, an extra two grand, two or three grand. And I mean, I personally would walk away at that point. I would not pay two or three grand over MSRP for any vehicle. Another misconception is when, when you're buying um, a Riker, some dealers have the nerve to say that the warranty must go with the vehicle if you're financing it. Warranty is not a mandatory item in, in the purchase of a Riker at all. It's optional all the time. And every dealership sets their price. The warranty company offers the warranty to the dealership at a certain price and the dealership then marks it up, either double or triple the price. So always remember that the warranty is actually negotiable. You can negotiate the price of the warranty. A real finance guy will mark it up a couple hundred bucks, make something, and move along. He'll sell a warranty with every deal that goes out the door. Some of these guys want to charge double or triple the price because they're greedy. There are aftermarket uh, warranties that you can add on later. I believe even if it's a used Riker, you can add it on at a later time. So this thing comes with a manufacturer warranty. Unless you feel really, really um, uncomfortable leaving with it without an extended warranty then I suggest you do it try to negotiate the price down on it um, so you can feel like you came out um, on a deal also you know you could always try to see if you could get uh, an item for in the deal you know like maybe a C maybe some covers uh, anything just you know you should always 
ask to see what can they do especially if you're paying MSRP it's always nice to see if you can get something extra on the deal maybe an oil change you know something to that aspect another question that I get a lot of my DMs is uh, interest you know, uh, a lot of people don't understand the financing part of it. Dealership is common sense. They do deals every day. For the average Joe, interest rates, you know, it's hard to sometimes understand. They don't understand what it is that they're paying. So let's say I'm going to use these numbers. They're not set in stone, so don't scream at me. Let's say the Riker is $15. Now you have all your accessories in that price, including your tax, title, freight, and everything added up to $15,000. So when you look at the contract, the contract is going to say $15,000, that's including all your taxes, fees, and everything. And then on the other side, you'll see a box that will show like $4,000, $5,000, $6,000, whatever it is. And there's a total of like $20,000. Now you're saying, oh, why am I paying $20,000? You have an interest rate. Those are going to lead to the term of the loan. So you have your interest rate calculated on the term of the loan. Let's say it's 10%. They calculate an APR, your annual percentage rate for the term of your loan, and it's calculated for whatever it is, two years, three years, four years, five years, and they add it on. That's how long it's going to take you to pay your vehicle, and you're going to pay the interest on that loan that way. I'll simplify the math on the interest a little bit. So let's say I loaned you $100 over the course of five months, and I say, hey, I'll lend you the $100, you'll pay me $20 a month, for the next five months at 10% interest rate. So your first payment is gonna be $20 plus 10% interest on the $100. So you'll be paying me $30 that month. The next month, now you have a balance of $80 and you're gonna pay me 10% on that $80, so that's $8. So you'll make me a $28 payment for that month. The third month, you're gonna make another $20 payment with a 10% interest rate which is $6, is a $26 payment. So that's why your best bet is to download a auto loan calculator, punch all the numbers in, interest rate, term, we'll get to in a minute. You'll put the term, the price, the total price, and you'll notice on the sheet that if your vehicle is 20,000, you paid a $300 payment, this much went to principal, and this much went to interest. And the next month, the balance went down, so this much went to principal, and this much went to interest. So an older loan calculator would probably be the best if you want to understand the math on how to pay interest. Term is going to be determined on how long do you want to take to finance the Riker. So there's 12 months in one year, that's 12, 2 years is 24, 3 years is 36, 4 years is 48, 5 years is 60. You'll see that on your paperwork also, either 24, 36, 48, 60, 5 years is 60. So it's 12 months per month and that's what they're going to calculate your term on so you know some people get fixated on I just want to pay a certain amount 200 and they don't care what the term is that's not the right way to purchase a vehicle you should really focus on what the total price of the car is and it's just basic math at that point take the total of the car and you divide it by how many months and you should be able to kind of calculate what your payment would be minus your interest rate interest rates all going to be determined on your credit. So, I don't know if you guys remember years back, you would see a Volkswagen commercial and it would say sign and drive. On a sign and drive, you know, if your if your credit sustains the ability to take on a $20,000 loan with no money down, you just sign and drive, the lender would lend you the money to just do that. But if you have a 500 credit score, that all, then comes down to down payments. I had a comment say, hey, you know, so I, my friend got it with $1,000 down. They're asking me for $4,000, $5,000. The reason for that is because, let's say the right is $15,000 and you submit it in an application and the lender is only lending you $10,000, you have to put the remaining balance of $5,000 down because your credit, they're not extending you that much credit to get the Riker. A lot of that $500 down, zero down, it always has a small print, you know, for qualified buyers. And some people do qualify, but a lot of people don't. So, you know, that, that was always a gimmick to get people inside the dealership. They send out those flyers and, you know, $500 down or 0% down, come down, all everybody approved. Um, and that's not the case, you know, 
there's never a hundred percent guarantee approval unless you're doing a in-house financing or buy here pay here another common question in my dms is you know i how do i know if i like it the dealership won't let me test drive it I like to take it for the test ride by this time you should have already went through your three-wheel endorsement um, they might have had something at the class for you to test ride either a spider or a riker and i get it if they wasn't either or and you only rode one and you wanted to ride the other at that point just go on to some of these dealership websites they do a lot of demo rides you might have to travel a little bit to other dealers to get a demo ride in but they're available you know sign up for a couple and test ride you know you don't have to only do one but you do need your three-wheel endorsement to do the demo rides at the dealership so make sure you have that already in place follow all the all the rules that they they require like boots pants long shirts helmet and uh, hit a couple of dealerships, sign up for a couple of them, and you'll get the feel for what it is really you want to buy, either the Riker or Spider. I not like either one of them, you know, so one of these things, or rent one, you know, try to see if you can find one on Toro, and then rent one for the day, but you should have your three-wheel endorsement by, by then. All right, and anything that I spoke about, leave some questions in the comments, um, or something about your experience when you went to buy one, if you've already purchased one, what other buyers should be looking out for when they go to the dealership if there's any questions that I, I didn't answer or there's still some uncertainty on your end and i can answer them for you leave it down in the comments hopefully you got something informative out of this video so please like comment and subscribe uh, it really helps my channel don't forget to subscribe